what you did. You've gone and made this personal. So we were just listening to Alexandria Ocasio Cortez talking in. Um, sorry, my speech is slow. Alexandria Ocasio Cortez speaking in the Capitol about like how Ted Yoho insulted her before she went in to cast her vote, and then as she was leaving, it's funny because like <laughs> you clearly like there's a lot of powerful men in government who have never actually learned to control their fucking emotions and it, it's so clear it's so abundantly clear the, the funny part isn't the funny part isn't that he accosted her on the steps of the hill the funny part is that he said all these things like you know you i don't know what he called her like uh, crazy entitled maybe or uh insane yeah where's the rest of them oh nice um, is he, he called her all of those names before she went in to cast her vote. And then, like, afterward, as she came out, he had so much time to, like, get his shit together and just be like, okay, maybe I shouldn't be insulting her out in public in front of everyone. And all of the time it took her to vote was not enough for him to take, like, a single deep breath and be like, hey, maybe I shouldn't call this woman a fucking bitch in front of reporters. And he just went and did it anyway. That's the funniest part. Because you, you know that you know that Republicans are really, really angry. Because most of them unironically believe this shit, right? Like, they genuinely believe that she's insane. They genuinely believe that she's, like, psycho. They, they, they buy into, like, the memes of, like, you know, a woman with, like, a woman with eyes that that open, like, remotely wide must be, like, that's a sign that she's crazy. It's like massive, like misogynistic memes. Get down! They're coming through the door. But this is this is the this is the sexist's equivalent of showing your power level, where they're really mad because this sets them back because they have to come out and openly say it, which makes the whole thing sound really ridiculous. Um, passive sexism is much easier when you dabble in the memes, kind of passively. Uh, when you come out and say a woman with a woman with big eyes must be crazy. It it breeds insanity into the meme. Um. Go back to the lab and give me a damage report. Get out of my way, chef. Please, please, please. Oh, I didn't even get the first one. Rip. And no, it's just really funny. Um. It's just really funny because there's so much bigotry that you can profit off of. So take, there's a lot of stereotypes that you can, there's a lot of stereotypes that you can make a, like, a lot of social capital off of. Um, damn, I just needed one more kill. Uh, there's a lot of stereotypes you can make decent social capital off of. So like, let's say... Let's take really, really dumb stereotypes, right? Uh... The warrior gene is a good example. Oh, this is the berserker one. Nice. I'll watch this cutscene and then I'll talk more. You're gonna meet a bitch. That's where you're gonna meet one. You know what I'm saying? Warrior gene is the racist stereotype that black that. men are having have, an, have on, a natural man. aggression trait that outweighs Why? white people. It's complete pseudoscience. <laughs> so yeah, take something like the warrior gene, right? It the, the, for most people that's gonna come off as ridiculous pseudoscience, which is why race realists are like jumping, bending over backwards to create some kind of pseudoscientific justification for it. Um, it's basically a theory that like that people of African descent are naturally, like, are naturally less intelligent and more aggressive than other kinds of people. Um, there's no scientific justification for it. And, yeah, it, you have to go into, like, things like, 
that's why people go into things like skull shape and, and random bullshit like that because they're trying to define they're trying to define black people as basically another species um and and the more explicitly you talk about it kind of the more ridiculous it starts to sound unless you really start to construct a narrative like really really construct an entire like flat earth theory construct an entire mythos around it so that's what that's what the uh, the kind of the warrior gene experiment is, or the race realist experiment is. Um, so, the problem is that there isn't 300 years of 300 years of pseudoscience constructed about like proper pseudoscience constructed about like women and mental health and, and, and shit like that, right? That's all been stuff that we talk about very colloquially, very casually. So there is there is a passive understanding among men. And by men, I mean men who have not checked their, like... Men have a tendency to be sexist, no matter who. And I don't... It's heavily socialized into us. I'll, I'll, I will say that much, right? that we have a tendency to view women as less intelligent um, mostly because of patriarchy and because of like a male chauvinistic male dominated society and, and, and social conversation and so when you take so what we'll do is we will feed into tropes that we don't question on the surface but instead accept underneath to be passively true such as a woman with big eyes is crazy if you say that out loud it sounds ridiculous so the point is you don't say it out loud all right altruist cult time i want to hump you right now we staying at the hotel southwest from here thank you so much I know Altruist Cult is not part of 100%, but I really enjoy it. You have, like, the best tits in the whole world. Um, I have to work for a living, I would just... So, yeah, like... Our car, bro. Most sexist tropes about women, if you speak them out loud, you're going to immediately realize, wow, that is, like... I can't believe that there was a bias that I held against that. If, if you're remotely self-aware, right? You smell like cigarette and buffalo. And... So the thing that AOC does really effectively ha sorry, road kill. The thing the thing that AOC does really effectively is call out those tropes and kind of force people to be explicit about them because she's very unapologetically vocal and young and um Hey, what are you crazy kids doing back there? And while you're sweeping the front porch, why don't I work on her Does not plumbing? withhold or... What did you say? How about I suck those or uh, stones sanitize balls, big guy. Get this party really feminine started. traits that she has wow, and feminine wow, okay. behaviors that she exhibits cool, cool. that are typically associated ridiculously with, you know, a lack of qualification or leadership skills or a lack of intelligence or a lack of... M like a lack of away. mental stability you know, I don't recognize she comports herself with like a constant guy. composure and almost class um i don't like the term class because it's a little classist but hey, but like she's very she's very composed very collected all the time and she just sits and watches people, like bros launch themselves at her, almost like they're trying to slide into her fucking DMs or neg her. Um, and and like, what she'll do is like, she's just she acts like her, and puts puts a name to the tropes that are wielded against her, and then forces people to put a name to the tropes that are wielded against her because people are just trying to get her to vindicate those tropes they're trying to get her to lose her mind and it's like a game of chicken in a sense where it's like oh i cannot get this person to just break down on tv 
Um, so what winds up happening is some moron like Ted Yoho basically comes up to her. This is exactly what she wanted, by the way, I think, is this is exactly part of her political calculation coming into government and presenting in the way that she does. And it's brilliant, and it, and it seizes on something that Democrats have been so ineffective at doing, which is really, really, really exposing the blatant sexism in the Republican Party. Um, and so Ted Yoho comes up to her and he's like, he calls her a fucking bitch. And at this point, like, Hey, I think you taking us too far, man. Yeah, I'm pretty sure our hotel wasn't up a mountain. Ah, don't worry. Just wanted to show you Lovebird's the most romantic little spot in the whole county. <laughs> now you're talking. What do you say, babe? Start on a little nature documentary out here? I don't know. I just want to go home now. Oh, you'll love this place. We'll really bring you close together. This is so mean. <laughs> this is so fucked up. Help, help. What do you got? What do you got? I heard you're interested in taking care of some lost travelers for a price. And so it is. And so it is. Leave the body, take the gold. Come on. Um. So now Republicans are really angry at her because, like, now some of them will be facing some cognitive dissonance of, like, some of them will be like, Sh you weren't supposed to say the quiet part out loud. Some of them are going to be like, wait, maybe this trope is really messed up. And it's going to be, it's, it's difficult to... It's difficult to use crazy women as a rallying cry when someone has gone and put words to it. I, that's not to say that, you know, Republicans are going to have some kind of epiphany. I, I think that if, eventually, like, when you're part of a death cult like the Republican Party, it becomes fairly, not easy, but pretty inevitable that eventually most of these people are going to rationalize themselves back to their previous positions. But now it's going to be like a... There's going to be, like, at least in the anti-AOC kind of realm of, of, of the GOP, you've created a weakness in one of your primary weapons against her with your base, and it's difficult because now Republicans have to do all of this labor on their end to re-rationalize why they hate AOC so much that they're just going to be working on that and... It weakens, zealotry is really important to the strength of the Republican Party and the ability of a person to really rationalize themselves into a situation where they can act with full faith and full belief that what they're doing is justified, right? And the easiest way to do that is to believe that you are not a sexist. It's very difficult, actually, should I do Strangers and Freaks first? Uh, T, this is gonna be the airplane mission, right? Airplane mission should be fine. I just don't wanna go to Los Santos without doing most of the missions available to me now. I wanna start all of the Strangers and Freaks. Yeah, it's really weird. It's really strange. Um, how bigotry and the self-awareness of bigotry interact within a person and how your environment can cause you to rubber band back to where you were and how you were. I was talking, I was having an interesting conversation last night and uh, Destiny was talking about this with Wreckful. This is a bit of an aside about how like happiness tends to be a certain baseline and you have fluctuations from that baseline, but the individual events in your life don't generally change what your baseline is and you will always tend back toward that i think it's the same with uh other aspects of like your worldview that um most people will have a worldview that is imposed upon them by their environment by their long-term environment and generally speaking your environment will dictate what your view is um 
the the best way the best way out of that is um, exposure to philosophy and exposure to the concept of argument, the concept of critiquing your own beliefs and other people's beliefs, um, epistemology generally, and ethics. Um, I think both epistemology and ethics are crucial to breaking that cycle. But most people really haven't and will probably never break that. I don't know to what extent I've broken that. Trevor! Oh, is this O'Neill's? No, it's not O'Neill's. I tried, Trevor! They were here for you. Here for you. Who was here? Them bikers. It's really interesting Run! how people interact Run, with bigotry. I got the gun. Meet me at the water tower just north of the airfield. Um... Of course there are! Two planes are touching down at the field on a weapons run! We're gonna wait till the right time and appropriate them! We are? Yes! We are! Did I'll I try this. I'm waiting at the water tower! Damn. I'm up here. I don't see the hardware. But I do see a hell of a lot of bikes. So, like, you can unconscious bias specifically to refers to... to the gas tank you're rigging up to blow. Specifically really? refers to, like, I guess this is unconscious bias, but it's like, it's kind of, it is unconscious, this is your moment, it's unconscious Ronald. bias Whenever you get that a your mind, is a I little more, that is a little bit more, right. like, now, blatant than... The, the kinds of hiring so bias far. that you have. It and don't let them spot you. Can you see me, Though maybe it's not. I don't know. Like, Here, by the road. actually, I can totally see something ridiculous. Like, you know, her eyes were too big as like an unconscious bias reason for not hiring rod. a woman. One of these assholes is having a seizure or something. But when unconscious bias becomes conscious, like what happens after that really depends on the environment, right? When somebody puts... How you interact with unconscious bias depends heavily on your environment. Like... Whether you continue to be checked on it. Whether you continue to, like... Be forced... Whether you continue to interface with it. Where, where, where's the con- I can't see the guy in the control tower. He's gotta go! This ain't a joke! He's gotta go! I literally- Oh, there he is. Nice. And they all came tumbling down. I'm gonna have to up my gamma again. Holy cow. I'm just gonna max out my gamma. I have too much glare. Painless as possible. What's really sad is like. To to a generally self-aware person, the um. To continue on what I was talking about before. To a generally self-aware person. The explicit statement of an unconscious bias is oftentimes the beginning of the end of that bias because you realize how ridiculous it might be. The, the problem is that, like, when you're part of a group that is committed to the uh, is committed to the cause of discrimination and will kind of band around each other to protect themselves from the cognitive dissonance, in a sense, you're not going to solve the issue through, like, Yoho hurt the Republican Party by stating, by calling AOC, you know, and fucking bitch out loud. I'm not sure if anyone's back in the house. But, like, yeah. Um, but, hold on, where's, where's this guy? Oh, there you are. But, if you, um... What's probably going to happen is 
a bunch of Republicans are gonna have to like go completely dark so that they don't have to in public have I haven't flown in forever. Well, the man on my wing presents no immediate danger. Latest shareholder report. <gasps> I was looking for. Oh, it's the one of the D pad buttons. Oh, my God. I told my contact to meet us just off the coast. Hey, there's a biker on your wing, Trevor. I am aware. Yeah, sure I was. So, what's what's generally supposed to happen is you have an unconscious bias. It gets pointed out by some, you know, usually it's typically somebody who agrees with you is going to state something that you didn't realize that you actually believed, or that you kind of had an inkling that you believed, but you didn't you didn't speak it out loud, so you didn't realize how ridiculous it was. And then that's a that's like an experience of cognitive dissonance and you go through that and you realize oh hey maybe i shouldn't believe this anymore and once you explicitly state that it becomes a lot easier for you to stop practicing that bias what republicans do is when they're forced when they're put into that state of cognitive dissonance they um they go kind of into radio silence on the topic in order to avoid actually coping with the ridiculousness of the belief they've just had exposed. In my opinion, one kind of person that does that is the person who believes in animal rights but is not vegan. Um, part of the reason that Part of the re reason that like people find the vegan argument so offensive, um, and they're so hostile toward it, is uh, honestly that like it's a very difficult argument to have because it forces you to it forces you to question a belief that you've taken for granted. Like I hadn't thought of that. We might be able to buy into Oscar's thing, but leave that to me, Ron. If Republicans engage the cognitive dissonance of, you know, a sexist belief that they have, it, it's entirely possible their entire worldview can fall apart. Oh, he pays better than any in this sorry country. Oh, nope, this is not going to work. Yeah. I forgot to roll myself up right. This is a long load. So the easiest thing for Republicans to do is to just avoid the topic entirely. Allows them to keep on doing what they were doing, doesn't put them in a compromising position of power because they don't have to go against their own party, and they just band together and make a tacit agreement like, we're just not going to talk about this. We'll drop like an ornamental censure on Ted Yoho and then disappear, right? I feel like something's wrong here. Might have to restart the game. Oh, if I restart the game, I'm gonna... If I restart the game, I have to restart the mission, and I don't want to restart the mission. So this is the thing that someone like Joe Biden doesn't understand, is that the fever will break is a platitude that is describing a very particular process of self-awareness that liberals have to a larger extent than republicans but to a lesser extent than say i would in my opinion people like me 
Um, though I, you know, I am a liberal, but I, I'm one of the good ones. Um, that realizing something is wrong with the way that you see the world leads to a, a process of dissonance between your worldview and the contradiction to that worldview that you are being forced to confront. At that point, you have two choices. You can either confront the contradiction or you can avoid it till it goes away. I gotta tell you twice, show me your backstroke. Fuck. Fucking hell! Okay. Let's have some fun then. Um. Yeah, at that point, you have a choice. You can either confront the dissonance and resolve it, or you can avoid it until it leaves your um, until it leaves your 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 frame of reference, or it leaves your line of vision. And typically, that decision is going to be determined by your environment. I'd like to think that people are capable of getting to the point where they are incapable of avoiding that dissonance, simply by simply by grounding their kind of surface surface level moral processes with like an underlying understanding of what drives your ethics to get you to the point where you cannot make decisions that contradict your underlying ethical worldview and so you have to confront the contradiction otherwise it's going to be bothering you no matter what I don't have C4, do I? The problem is most people have not grounded their surface level ethics in anything deeper than that. Um, and for like for someone like, say, Rem the Bath Boy, he would say, like, you should ground it to the very base level. Which, you know, and he, he also probably agrees that, like, not everyone needs to do that. It would be good if everyone did that. But generally speaking, like, you should understand what fuels your ethics. And that's not labor that's very difficult to do. The truth is, like, I'm ridiculously lazy. Like, if I was able to ground my... If, if I was able to ground my surface-level beliefs in an ethical framework, um, most people are able to do it, I'm sure. Um, so basically, if I... Uh, if, if I am dealing with... Sorry, one second. So... The, the problem is that you have a choice, and that choice is usually dictated by your environment. Because, yeah, it's usually dictated by your environment. So someone like Joe Biden, for example, I think is actually capable of moving to the left genuinely. But he's very amenable to his political environment. So the more lefties are... The more left-leaning people are in his administration, and, but the problem is that he sees he sees the world that way as, like, an honest person will try and surround themselves with a multitude of political views. And there are flaws with his... There are flaws with the, his theory of whom he should surround himself with. He genuinely believes in like this all-side civility type thing. But he considers himself someone who is capable of finding the best possible view because he surrounds himself with all of them. And there are flaws with that, but there are also merits to that, yes, it's possible to push Biden left on things if you make a convincing argument, or if you just, you know, surround himself with enough people who disagree with him. But there's an even deeper flaw in his reasoning, which is that he thinks that everybody's going to surround themselves with opposing political views, which is just not true. Um, I'm just going to do this again. I'm So the only way that the only way that cognitive dissonance leads to an actual change is if the person is in an environment that is going to encourage them to change as opposed to simply avoid the cognitive dissonance. This is the big problem with, like, loyalty culture, right? Uh, oh, this is the, uh, the vigilante stuff. The apprehension of peoples. Alright, I gotta kill this heli. What? Um. 
So if the person is not in an environment that's gonna like, this is the big problem with streamer loyalty culture is that like, or not streamer, but just generally loyalty culture is that people look for friends who are gonna support them even what they do is messed up, which is not helpful because nobody actually benefits from that. As in so society doesn't benefit, benefit from that. If we're not willing to hold each other accountable, um, society loses out massively. Oh god, I have to kill this chopper too. I might just have to start the the airplane strip. So this is the problem with Biden's uh, Biden's outlook is that you have to have an environment that holds you accountable when you experience that kind of dissonance. And Republicans specifically curate their environment around like a mafia culture in which you, you don't hold each other accountable. You specifically avoid accountability by protecting each other and covering up for each other. And it's a tacit understanding of of uh, of non accountability. I gotta make a stop at ammunition. You're meeting me at the Lost MC's airfield. So what it allows people to do is routinely, con I'll consistently avoid that cognitive distance. Oh, so when you're dealing with someone who's not operating in, you know, not operating in good faith, who's not looking to improve their behavior, well, we're about to find out if that's the best true. thing to do is what, the best thing to do is what AOC is Metal doing now, man. which is posture. Brand synergy, huh? TP Industries, ammunition. And that's what she's doing. She's posturing. She is using this to gain moral superiority over the GOP. Which, you know, obviously, like, she knows she has. But using it to, like... Using it to trigger that cognitive, uh, to trigger that dissonance in people who may be honest actors sitting in the audience who would be potential votes for the Democratic Party. Because while the while Republicans are going to kind of just avoid the topic altogether and eventually just go back to business as usual, not all of their supporters are going to do that, or not their supporters, not all of their potential voters are going to do that. There are going to be people who are potentially put off by the language and rhetoric and, and, and you know. And a lot of Republicans are aware of that and they're going to be angry at Yoho for doing this. Jeez. But one thing Republicans have to do is... Really? Um... A lot of the language that they use that traffics in misogyny, they have to avoid using it for the time being up, boss. This is high enough for me. until this blows over. And that is a positioning weakness uh, for the GOP. And that's political capital for the Democrats. And AOC knows how to uh, right. seize upon that, or rather, on, rather is willing to seize upon what that, but she understands Go that that's there. all you're going to get out of it. There's never going to be an appeal to the humanity of Republicans. You, um, and that's something that Biden believes that there is, which, uh, on which he's just completely wrong. The ATV can only take you so far. Park it. All right. Time for the clickbait discussion. Here's why I will never make it as a Twitch streamer, is that I don't know how to make a stream entertaining without a chat to engage with. That is very difficult. I have a lot of admiration for the people who do it. Um, I'm starting to pick up on ways that I could potentially figure that kind of stuff out, uh, but it is really, really, really tough. Because what you got to do essentially is you kind of have to go into the stream prepared with something that you're going to make your foolproof against a dead stream. Because, the, like, the, the thing is, if someone tunes into your stream and you're just not talking... Do I buy this? No, I don't buy this yet. Um, it's not your viewer's responsibility to make your stream entertaining. 
but the problem is that an active chat just makes it a lot easier for people to entertain, which I don't think is necessarily like a skill for granted. Like, I think there's a lot of people who probably don't know how to don't know how to convert a solid chat. I think I could convert a solid chat, but at the end of the day, like, you know, this isn't a silver platter, and you gotta find you gotta find stuff that makes a stream entertaining. Um, Playing Mario 64 makes things a lot easier because the gameplay is very engaging, right? Man, this looks like Mitch McConnell's sister. Alone, about to learn the true meaning of suffering, all for a few thousand bucks. Think you can find him for me? Every man has his talents, Maud, and the rigorous administration of justice is, uh, is one of mine. That's why I love you, Trevor. I'll send you his file. Yeah, what worked out really well for the start of this stream was I watched that Twitter clip, that C-SPAN clip, at the very, very, very beginning, before I started, uh, before I started playing. Uh, before I started watching... I, before I started playing, I watched that clip and it made life like, or not life, it made, um, obviously a clickbait titled my stream, but, um, I think I'm, I think I'm figuring out, like, one thing I should probably do is before every stream, watch something that happened in politics that day and just talk about it. I think that's probably my best. My best move. Because that's what I like doing. It's also something I'm good at. Today felt like a very productive stream. I still have 45 minutes left on it. Music choices, primo. Uh, this music's all fucking wrong. That's yeah, what I've been. I'm for. So, w one thing that's really like the response video type stuff. I mean, it's good for viewership. It's also the content I like doing. The thing, the thing was like I had considered doing response videos a lot, but I wanted like. I wanted to talk, speak on something that I actually felt myself to be a valuable voice in. But the feedback that I got was that I should speak on more topics, so. Stupid. I'm thinking of doing more prepared content. I just spoke to that but at the very least, He's coming. but at the very least, He's kind of adapting protected. my current Twitch content idiots, toward what know idiots. my on, feedback is saying that I should do. Chinese fellas. And with po oh, politics content, like... Brothers, you got you in bread. With politics content, like... If, if you think that what you're talking about is good, and that if people saw it, that it would be good for people to hear it... If, if, if you believe in what you're saying... Then the most important part is getting eyeballs. If you're getting eyeballs, then you should continue to do it. Right? 